Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A nonprofit that gives back to the community needs your help tonight after being targeted by thieves in the middle of the night. That group is called Hey Y'all Detroit, and its SUV that was stolen was packed with supplies for children in need. That group also delivers groceries for lower income families. Megan Woods has more on their plea for help. Megan. This empty space on St. Clair is where that black Chevy Trailblazer was parked Friday night. It was packed for back to school event, and on Saturday morning when the owner came out, it was gone. People didn't eat on Monday. That's how important Hey Y'all Detroit is to the community. People didn't eat because we couldn't get it to them. Charmaine Neal is the founder of Hey Y'all Detroit, a grassroots organization that started in June 2020. Love giving back to the community and people depend on me. And it's like my feet have just been cut from up under me. She says Friday night she stopped by their storage unit, packed up the SUV, then parked it outside of her home, only for it to be stolen hours later. Her ring camera caught the suspects driving away. You stole from the community. You stole books, backpacks, and then it's what the truck represents. Kids look to us for those things. They get excited when they see, hey y'all, let's read, which is our pop-up library. Now, more than 50 backpacks filled with school supplies are gone. More than $1,200 of books just purchased are gone. She filed the police report but says there's a bigger problem. Two weeks ago, her personal car was broken into. This block in particular has been hit so many times. It's not just me. My neighbor's house who we're standing in front of right now, she's been hit five times to the point her car's not even out here anymore because she had to go to desperate measures to keep herself safe. It is ridiculous. Charmaine says this won't break their spirits. We will go on and have a free farmer's market. We will go on and have um, pop-up libraries and the Halloween event that we throw every year. We're still going to continue to do that. This is just um, a minor setback. And hey, y'all, Detroit has only had that SUV for about two weeks. So if you have any information, you're asked to call Detroit police. They're also raising money to replace those books and other supplies, as well as getting another vehicle with better theft protection. If you want to help and donate, we'll have a link on clickondetroit.com. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Yeah, Megan, we know a lot of people will do exactly that. All right. A judge permanently strikes down Michigan's 1931 ban on abortions just months after suspending it in a decision very likely to be appealed by anti-abortion groups. Judge Elizabeth Gleischer ruled the law violates the Michigan Constitution. It was dormant before the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade in June. The law makes it a crime to perform abortions unless the life of the mother is in danger. The attorney general, other prosecutors and Planned Parenthood sued to get a ruling on whether the 1931 law is constitutional. Meanwhile, this week, the Michigan Supreme Court is expected to rule whether a ballot proposal guaranteeing abortion rights will be on the November ballot. That decision is expected by Friday. That's the deadline for when ballots need to be printed. On Wednesdays in the city, you might see a group of people out walking the streets led by Police Chief James White. It's an effort to talk directly to people in their own neighborhoods about gun safety. Jason Colthorpe tonight on the west side, and it's a message that's about unity. Exactly. Being united on the message of gun safety and getting that message out to as many people as possible. It's Walk a Mile Wednesday. Let's walk, let's have some fun, but most of all, let's make some noise in a positive way. And Chief James White is doing more than just walking. He's passing out gun locks. What's more important to me getting them out is people using them. Sir, how you doing? How you doing? I have a gun lock for you. If you don't need to give it to someone who does. So we can pass them out all day long, but you got to take that 30 seconds, 45 seconds to secure your weapon. Guns get us in more trouble than they get us out of. If you've got a weapon, you have a tremendous responsibility to make sure that it's secured properly. More than 50 Detroit children have been injured or killed by guns this year, including a five-year-old who was killed August 23rd when they found a gun in a relative's house and it went off. It's those stories that take the steam out of statistics that may show progress in other areas. When you have 100 non-fatal shootings, less than you did the year before, that doesn't help when you, you have a child hurt or you have a, a citizen who's lost a loved one. Um, no, those numbers mean nothing. In addition to children being shot, Detroit has also seen a wave of mass shootings. That too brings concerned citizens and community groups out to these walks. We want to see our city safe. Quincy Smith is with Detroit Ceasefire, which preaches conflict resolution and de-escalation as ways to stop the shooting 
before it starts. You know, teaching folks conflict resolution and de-escalation, extremely important um, restorative, restorative practices. Um, there's so many methods and strategies that we can push in the community um, that would be so beneficial. Um, and again, you know, it, there's a lot of groups out here doing that kind of work, you know. Um, we just got to, we got to touch more people. Yeah, so many people on that walk tonight talked about the kids like the ones you see behind me. They have to be able to protect those kids. And that's why they're doing this one neighborhood at a time, one week at a time. We're on the west side tonight. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Eastern Michigan University filing a lawsuit tonight asking a judge to force its striking faculty members back to work. Last night, the EMU faculty voted 91% in favor of authorizing a strike. Two sides have been fighting over pay raises and a cost of health care. Contract talks between both sides still ongoing. Today, hundreds of professors, though, hit the picket lines in a move that canceled classes for some students. The administration has just been stonewalling this the whole time in order to try to force us to what amount to pay cuts. And that's all that is to it. You know, I and mean, they're offering us 2% pay raises at a time when inflation is 9%. We're gonna continue to work and try to bring resolution to this. The primary interest for us is, is getting to a place where our students can get back into the classroom and we have to serve our students. Our faculty know that, we know that, and that's what we're focused on. So if a judge grants the injunction, it would force presumably EMU professors back into the classroom. A sex assault investigation is now underway on the campus of Oakland University. Police say the assault took place in the P5 parking lot near Oakview Hall late last night around midnight. The victim apparently met the suspect on Tinder and told police it was their first in-person connection after meeting on the app. The suspect is described as a 21-year-old man, about 6'1", 190 pounds with brown eyes and black hair. Police say he was driving a 2019 black Chevy Camaro. The arson investigation in Superior Township now includes seven suspicious fires all set at the same mobile home park in the past month. Most of the fires were started in trash cans outside the homes, but all seven fires believed to have been started intentionally. Fortunately, no one has been seriously hurt in any of these fires. They have caused a lot of damage at the Arbor Woods mobile home park. Latest fire Monday when a neighbor spotted a 15 year old trying to set fire to a patio. Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office has identified the teenager and has released the teen to their parents pending prosecution. Big turnout tonight to honor a mother of five shot and killed during uh, what was a random shooting spree last month in Detroit. Lorie Briscoe was killed while waiting at a bus stop along Livernoy. Tonight, the Rams Horn in Southfield, where she'd worked for the past 20 years, hosted a benefit in her honor with half of all sales going to her family. There was also a 50-50 raffle and a donation box at the front of the restaurant. She loved the Lakers, so it's, it's nice to see that they decked out the whole place in, in yellow and, and purple. That it's just really nice that they went that far to to appreciate a memory of Lorraine. Unfortunately, when something like this tragic happens, it hits home, and she's leaving behind five children. Uh, two are grown, but three young children, and it's uh, going to be very difficult on her brother who's taken them in. And we thought we'd do a, a benefit and help them. Really nice gesture, and uh, we just got word that tonight's benefit, too, raised about $1,600 for the family. State police believe road rage led to a freeway shooting in Detroit. Happened this time about 2 o'clock this afternoon at I-94, the exit near the West Grand Boulevard ramp. State police say a box truck driver was on the freeway when someone shot at him. Mm -hmm. Troopers say the victim's truck was hit. They found two shell casings at the scene. Also found a bullet fragment in the area. Investigators say the shooter was driving a newer model white SUV.